he's telling the warden sir he takes the sweet from my hand and he disappeared in front of my eyes sir puts the laddu in her hand she opens that packet and in that laddu is her mangal sutra so what are these life lessons that we have learned from swami as bhajan boys साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्यदेवाय धीमहे तन्न सर्व प्रचोदयात स्वामी आस्क्ड माय पेरेंट्स हाउ इज रवि एंड ही सेड स्वामी ही इज योर चाइल्ड सो ही हैज टू बी अ गुड बॉय दैट काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग स्वामी सेड नो ही इज नॉट हाउ डज दैट भजन गो सिंग अ फ्यू लाइंस he is not able to recall he's forgotten he's saying swami I, i don't remember okay what did you sing yesterday he's blank you can imagine what 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 would have gone when you had simply stopped to sing bhajans why because god himself does not like your singing
loving pranams at the divine lotus feet of our ever present swami and invoking his presence and his benediction this beautiful sunday afternoon to all my brothers and sisters and most revered elders seated here our loving sairam to one and all we call this particular session as samarpan whether we call it samarpan sharanagati or atmanivedanam it all stands for surrender or an offering and all of us have assembled over here to probably celebrate the greatest offering of all and that is the offering of god coming down in human form for the sake of mankind and probably that is the greatest samarpan for all of us his every moment he offered to us every drop of blood in his body he offered to us what greater samarpan can be there and it is in it is as a response to that call that we all have assembled over here to celebrate this samarpan this samarpan of our thoughts our words and our deeds at his lotus feet for all that he has done for us it is said that as many types of people there are there are those many ways to reach god and what is so beautiful is that as many types of people are there god reaches to those people in those many different ways and for all of us swami at different points of time in our lives has had a different unique relationship with us at some times he has been the loving mother he has been the strict father he has been a very good friend and of course he has been the guru and above all he has been god for he is god for all of us so what we intend to do today is share with all of you some of those memories that we have those memories which we cherish where swami at different points of time in our lives has played those many roles and by that we just hope that while you listen to us you're able to turn back the pages and go back to those moments recall those memories which we all have with him where he has played those roles for all of us assembled here and when we think of this particular song akhiyan tere darsh ki pyasi it is these beautiful this particular video that we just saw we missed that form in fact we missed that form because it came down for us it became a part of our life and today in a sense we missed that form and we also have the form and it is those recollections that we thought that we will have with you so that you can actually go back and think of all those moments that you have had so to start with let's take swami as the divine mother we have seniors who have had the privilege of being woken up by swami himself when they were just a handful of students in the brindavan during the 1960s swami would come and wake them up in the morning for them to chant suprabhatam can there be anything more loving than that where he is awake before you and he wakes you up and tells you to chant suprabhatam for what which is supposed to wake him up and we have had the honor of listening to some of our esteemed elder brothers one of them recalled this incident where i believe you, you would have seen swami come out to the veranda and speak to the primary school students right on so many occasions they would be the sweet nothings which swami would apparently talk to them but on this one occasion swami came and called one student and said what was for lunch today and that student replied saying swami it was brinjal curry and brinjal curry it must be confessed and so many of my brothers are already smiling when i say brinjal curry because it is not one of those desired dishes as part of the hostels schedule 
So Swami said, oh, Brinjal Kari. And a few days later, Swami happened to ask again. And coincidentally, when Swami asked, Brinjal Kari was served the, on that day as well. And Swami said again. And a couple of days later, again he asks, just when Brinjal Kari has been served in hostel. And this time, Swami pulled up the hostel cook and said, what is this? Why are you serving Brinjal Kari over and again? Is there no other vegetable that you're finding? Anytime I'm asking, boys are saying it's Brinjal Kari. Needless to say, because Swami pulled up the cook, for the next month or so, boys did not have to have Brinjal Kari on their plates. That is the love of a mother, is it not? Come down to those kind of details. And there was no limit to the details that he would look into. In fact, when we saw this video of Swami at Uti, I, I, I also have heard that in Uti, Swami would, they, they used to be the school at Uti, and in the night after the students have slept, it seems Swami would take a round, take a walk around the dormitory and see if all the students were covered well under the blankets. And he would put the blanket over the student and the student would probably not even know that Swami has come for that walk in the night. We have the privilege of having Ravi sir with us today who was there in Uti, who has had some of those wonderful moments with, with Swami. And sir, if you could share some of your memories Yes, indeed. Uti, uh, the school was called Nandanavanam, and it was literally that. It was where uh, Lord Sai Krishna would come, and then we were all like little Gopalas and Gopikas, and that was literally Swami's playground there. And he was also that loving mother. As Siddhartha was mentioning, once we were tucked into bed, Uti was very cold. Swami would come around and then see if we were well covered, and he would cover us with our blankets. Then he would come to the dining hall and uh, make sure that the rasam rice that we used to get was hot. He would come and say, you know, little kids, is the rasam rice hot? Then he would call the warden and say, no, this is cold. Get hot rasam rice for these kids. These are the little, little things that Swami used to do in Uti. And I remember we had a playground where we would go and play as tiny tots. And when Swami was eventually leaving Uti, it was uh, with a very heavy heart for all of us, obviously for Swami also, because, you know, leaving these little children behind, Swami would, uh, you know, uh, look a little sad. And then we used to feel very sad, but then Swami used to tell us, go and play. So we would go to the playground, and then there was this long winding road which would go down from the Uti school. And then as he would go down, we would go to the edge of the playground, and like parents would do to their children, from the car window, he would wave to all of us, you know, as he was going down that road. And then we would all wave back to Swami from here, you know. So it was that mother-child relationship so beautiful in that, in that hill station in uh, Uti. And then how was, how was the transition like when you made it to Prashant Indalayam? Yes. That was, in fact, it was a rough transition for us because we were the first batch that left the Uti school because after we finished our fifth standard, we were suddenly told there is no sixth standard in OT. So as kids, obviously, we didn't know what was happening. But our parents were very worried because uh, especially where I came from, there was no good schooling. So my father thought he had put me in a very good school for life. So they went back and prayed to Swami in Prashant Liam, And Swami said, come to Puttaparthi, I'll start sixth standard in the Ishwara Mahi school there. There was only Telugu medium in those days. This is 1981. But Swami started an English medium. But the only thing is, as tiny tots, we were put along with these senior boys in the senior boys hostel. So until our fifth standard, we were very well taken care of. Suddenly in the sixth standard, we were like left to fend for ourselves sort of in the hostel. So our elder brothers who were our room leaders, they would take care of us as much as they could. But then in OT, we had ayas taking care of our, taking care of our personal needs and we didn't have anybody. So many of us looked dirty. Many of us looked ragged. Many of us felt sicker than we were. As a child, I used to suffer from asthma. And this asthma became much worse. In those days, we used to have lots of these parthenium plants in Puttaparthi. And that would aggravate uh, the asthma. So I was a very sick child in my sixth standard. So I was already missing the homeliness of OT. And uh, I was missing my parents. And you know, once you're homesick, all these things compound. And I had a severe bout of asthma, and I could not go to school. So I was lying on my bed, 
in my pajamas, not able to get up because of severe asthma. And uh, one morning around 10 o'clock, one of the elder brothers comes. He wakes me up and says, come down, the warden is calling you. I wheeze to him and say, I cannot, I cannot, I am sick, I cannot get. He said, no, warden is calling you right now. He said, please tell him to come up and see me. I, I am not even able to go down for my food. Then he said, Swami has come down, he is calling you. I said, wow, no V is nothing. So I got up instantly, I rushed down, and there is this uh, guest room as soon as you enter the senior boys hostel. And uh, I was ushered in there, and the warden was standing, he said, go inside, Swami is calling you. And Swami was sitting there, and uh, with a loving smile, he called me. He said, uh, what happened? Uh, I said, Swami, asthma, I have wheezing. He said, yeah, yeah, papam, come, take Padnamaskar. He gave me Padnamaskar, he materialized Vibhuti. He said, eat it right now. So I put the entire Vibhuti in my mouth. And then he patted me, made me sit there. He was talking sweet nothings with me. And he made me so comfortable there. I had no problem of asthma. I have lost my asthma ever since then. And right then, I had lost the feeling of homesickness, the feeling that I was missing my home, the feeling that I was missing somebody taking care of me. All this was lost in that instant. So that was this loving mother who had come all the way from the mandir right to where I stayed and took care to see that this little child was not homesick. Because as you would have seen in that video, that darshan ground, the first day that I was left there in Oti, he made a promise to my Deha Mata that don't worry, go home. I will take care of your child. So he was my mother and he is my mother. So that is how. And I guess he is each one of our mothers, isn't it? I remember in our primary school, we used to get some amazing prasadam every Thursday and Sunday. And in, in fact, even more than the darshan of Bhagwan, we used to wait for the prasadam that you know we were going to get from his hands. And I remember one morning, it was, uh, it was a hot morning and it was time for ice cream. That day's morning prasadam was ice cream. And uh, out were coming, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these little, um, you know, ice cream packets and Swami was distributing uh, to all of us. And we were busy, you know, munching away and if we wanted a second one, Swami was giving. You know, but how Bhagwan is, he doesn't miss even a single opportunity to convey what he actually wants to tell us. And uh, even as we were munching away and Swami was watching us and you, you know how Swami would, when, when students are eating, how he would look, he'll say, hmm, hmm, tinnu, inka, inka, tinnu. And then he just made this comment, you know, he said, God is like ice cream. God is like pure white ice cream. God is sweet like ice cream. God is cool like ice cream. And that is why he is called Joy Ice Cream. The name of the ice cream was Joy Ice Cream. He didn't even miss a single opportunity to convey the most ultimate lessons. And today, you know what? I may not know the definition of God, but I definitely know, I remember this definition of God. And I think it's the, one of the most beautiful definitions of God. He's sweet like ice cream. He's cool like ice cream. He's pure like ice cream. And that is why he's joy ice cream. You know, that is the most beautiful definition of God. Swami had given it to us that one morning. What can we say about this mother? Here is a, another very beautiful song. It's in Tamil, but I'm sure it will resonate with each one of us because it is about that mother who has given us this life, who has given us this form, this body, and who has given us this beautiful relationship. It is said in this song that you know, a single drop of a tear from her eyes can fill up all the oceans because that is the weight of a mother's tear. It is also said that because the Supreme Almighty couldn't be with all of us all the time, He gave us our mother. And guess what? In our case, the Supreme Lord Himself has become our most beloved mother. And this is a beautiful song in praise of that mother. Oh, 
ಗೌರವಂ ನೀಯೇ ತಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಮಂದ ಉಯಿರೈ ತನ್ನುಡಲಿಲ್ ಸುಮಂದಿ ಉಯಿರೈ ಪಗಿಂದೆ ಉರುವಂ ತರುವಾಯ್ ಉನ್ ಕಣ್ಣಿಲ್ ಬಳಿಯುಂ ಉರು ತುಳಿ ಪೋದುಂ ಕಡಲುಂ ಮುಳುಗುಂ ತಾಯೇ ಒರು ತುಳಿ ಪೋದು ಕಡಲು ಮುಳುಗು ತಾಯಿ ಉನ್ ಕಾಲಡಿ ಮಟ್ಟು ತರುವಾಯ್ ತಾಯಿ ಸ್ವರ್ಗಂ ಎಂಬದ ಪೊಯ್ remember on one occasion no it was it was also also this loving mother but it was also this moment where we have brought tears to her eyes and i remember this particular incident i was in my primary school and uh, in fact the higher secondary school and that year the undergraduate boys the third year undergraduate boys had not performed too well in the exams and swami had just been informed about the dismal a performance of the students in the end semester exams and i remember swami walked out of the interview room and he just you know leaning against one of these pillars like this in prashanti nilam he just leant leaning against that he said you know how much pain you have caused that one mother you know who has sent you with so much expectation to swami's college that my son will do well because he is with bhagwan today you have let her down when you are not able to respect one mother's love swami said what will you understand a thousand mothers love let us always endeavor to keep that thousand mothers happy because if she is happy the entire universe is happy the entire world is happy that's it
Actually, as it's truly said, that a mother is a child's first friend. So that is where we move to. We have Swami, the loving mother with us, the loving thousand mothers rolled into one with us. And this same mother is also our friend, is it not? Since, since you said friend, uh, if, I may, if I may just interject here. I recall this uh, very fond memory of mine when we had finished our MBA. And as is the practice, the outgoing boys put up what is called as the gratitude program in front of Bhagwan when they finish school or when they finish undergraduation or postgraduation. And when we were finishing our MBA, we had put up a gratitude program. And gratitude program is the day when every student is given an absolute blank check. You can choose what you want to do on that day. If you want to speak for a couple of minutes expressing your gratitude, you can. You could take something, you could make a card or you could make something for Bhagwan. And everybody would get a chance to have a direct interaction with Bhagwan on that day. Swami would bless every single student who's passing out that day. And in our batch, we thought we had seen those wonderful videos of yesteryears where Swami and Kodekanal used to go on a picnic with the students and the students used to play passing the parcel. And the one who gets out, Swami would pick a chit from a bowl and hand it over to that student. And invariably, the student would get to do a task which he's not comfortable with. And Swami would have a great time watching a person who does not know Telugu stammer and speak a few words in Telugu. He would make somebody sing. Somebody who cannot sing will, will get a chit that he has to sing. So we have seen these videos and we thought, why not we play passing the parcel in front of Bhagwan in Mandir? And um, we had decided what would be the sequence of events. And if, so if I were to get out, my task was already prepared. I would be asked four questions on Bhagwan's life. Like, uh, there were four questions that were asked, like the famous Rishendra Muni incident of Swami making up for a dancer who did not come for the performance. So one of the questions that was to be asked to me was about this Bala Bhaskara medicine for which Swami wrote a jingle. Swami wrote a song which he would teach his friends who would go around singing about that Kote Subbanna's medicine which was sold in that, in that village. So I was to be asked, do you know the song? What is that song? Can you sing it for us? So we usually prepare for, you know, and I thought it would be nice if we could ask Swami for the lyrics. So I came up with that wild idea saying, why not we go and ask Swami for the lyrics? So then my classmate said, what if Swami does not respond? What is the backup plan? Better you learn the song. In case you see that Swami is not looking like he's going to respond, then you have to cover up with something else. So you better learn the song. But in my heart, I just couldn't accept that I had to learn the song and then pretend like I don't know it when I know it. So I said, yes, yes, I learn. And I did not learn it on that day. So we're doing the program. First question I was asked. The second question I was asked. This was the third question. And so the host who's asking me the question, he said, do you know the song? I said, yes, I can try. And I, I knew the first two lines of the song. And then obviously I blanked out. I do not know what else to say after that. So then he said, he knew that the plan was to ask Swami. So he said, so you have a lifeline. Would you like to ask someone? I said, yes, I want to ask my friend. And he said, oh, your friend knows? I said, yes, my friend definitely knows. He said, okay, who's your friend? So I said, my friend is Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba. And when I pointed out to Swami, when I looked at Swami, he had such a big beaming smile and he was so happy that he was going to be asked to help. And he, was, he couldn't wait for me to go up to him. He said, come, come, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> and I went up and Swami taught me the next two lines right there. And he told me, this is the next two lines, go and tell. So I came back down and I narrated the next two lines. I sang the next two lines and Swami said, yes, that's the right. So I, I thought one of, probably one of the accomplishments of my life is I could declare to Swami in front of everyone that he is the only friend and really though it might have seemed orchestrated really on that day at that moment I really needed him to bail me out because I just did not know and it was only Swami and me who knew that I did not know because everybody else thought I had a backup plan in place 
friend in need is friend a friend in need is totally a friend, friend in need. need absolutely and i think he's he's the lifelines of all our lives isn't it if there's one lifeline that we can always fall back upon it is that lifeline and in fact that lifeline has also been a, a you know part of my uh, my little life and you know I, uh, when when you said lifeline here was an yours was a case of an a, a dumb shirt program or a quiz program mine was an actual incident and let me tell you uh, i was in my 7th class and i had got very close to one of my friends again friends in uh, everything in quotes and uh, we were known to be extremely close and you know chummiest of friends and uh, obviously you know uh, when you attach yourself to the world it is bound to you know hold on to you you're going to get caught in that bondage and that's what had happened i committed a blunder of my life and that was that happened during the unit tests that we had um i actually cheated i helped him cheat okay in the in the unit test i helped him with the answer for a particular question it was a maths paper and uh, when this happened one of my classmates actually saw me helping this uh, this brother of mine in the uh, in the test and she promptly went and told the 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 class teacher that such, such and such a thing has happened now the class teacher was not an english uh, was not a maths teacher she was an english teacher but it so happened that the maths teacher was sitting next to the english teacher during correction and she was saying look at this uh, funny case of this this brother uh, you know this friend of mine who has got all the steps wrong but has got the answer right <laughs> okay obviously because the answer has been provided to him and that's when my class teacher figured out that yes yes this is the guy who has been helped and ameya has helped him and so both of us were hauled up and you can imagine in swami school such a thing happening we were given the pasting of our life okay and you are i mean literally there are no nooses or there are no crucifixions happening in primary school but we were just short of that you know if uh, those of you who have seen primary school you have a large big lobby as soon as you enter we were made to stand in the lobby and we were paraded as criminals you know to the rest of the schools and of course it was a pretty big crime and you know several things were uh, contemplated and you can imagine both of us you know standing in front of everybody over there we were literally our uh, stock prices had fallen to an <laughs> all time low and my sister was studying along with me uh, in the school she was immediately informed she promptly informed my parents <laughs> okay um you, so you can imagine and it so happened that finally a decision was that these boys you know need to be taught a good lesson we have to break this friendship and it was decided that one of us will be put into an other section so that we will not be in the same section and that's when the you know the, the final nail in my so called coffin i can say was when my own classmate said we don't want ameya because the other friend of mine was a good goalkeeper so when it came to class matches no we wanted a good goalkeeper they wanted a good goalkeeper and so they said we don't want ameya ameya the other section is saying we don't want ameya we want you know the other brother and so here i was you know absolutely lost completely lost i remember this was a monday on wednesday evening one of my classmates misbehaved for some reason thursday morning we went for darshan swami comes out for darshan after finishing the interviews he would generally spend some time with primary school st uh, students he walks up to this boy who had misbehaved on on wednesday night and swami blasts him okay swami just starts saying you know how horribly he has behaved how he has let down his parents how he has let down swami why swami you know uh, with what great expectations the parents had sent the children to study in swami school and how he had let down and swami says i want you to be good boys like that boy and he's pointing at me <laughs> and and swami looks at me and says come boy get up get up come here and i remember i stood next to swami and swami put his hand on my shoulder you know just like my best friend would okay and he said be like this boy very good boy and i, I saw that the faces of my teachers and you know i saw my stock price going way up <laughs> and that day I, i still remember all the prasadam distribution was you know was given to me swami you know told me to get everything because he wanted to show how good i am and so much so that the teachers finally asked me to seek for forgiveness for that other brother so i went and told swami i said swami please forgive that boy even for that i got praise see this boy how much is he you know and that day when i walked back i was a hero did i change how i was how different was i i was the same it was only that that one was standing next to the zero and that is why i became a hero that day and i knew that there was only one good friend 
in my life that I could always fall back upon and needless to say I have really never got close to anybody since then because there's only one person worth getting close to and that is our be beloved Lord. And this is a, another very beautiful song which, we had, which had been composed for the friend. Here we are, we are talking about Swami as the friend. It's called O Nestama, O My Dear Friend. It's a beautiful song in Telugu. We will tell you the meaning as the song goes. Conversation never end. Jeevanavenu Hulu Mohana Ragam Palikinji Pratimana Sulo Ni Prema Sudalo Punginji Jeevanavenu Hulu Mohana Ragam Palikinji
So when you start counting on this friend, when you start banking on this friend, slowly this, this friend starts teaching you many things. And when he starts teaching you, this friend becomes your guru. His proximity is the classroom. His presence is the lesson where every word, every seemingly innocent act, everything has a meaning. So that is why it is said living with God is true education because there is nothing that he doesn't lose a single opportunity to teach you something. Like Amay was saying, it could be something as inoculated as giving you ice cream, but he would not miss that moment to drive home a lesson that would go with you for life. So when we look at all our moments with Swami, each of us have been able to connect to Swami through something. It could be Vedam for someone, it could be dance for someone else, it could be drama for someone. But for the three of us, a common rope that he has held us together with is music through bhajans. So what are these life lessons that we have learned from Swami as bhajan boys or during the time that we have interacted with him as bhajan boys, these are some of the life lessons that this guru has taught us. And that is what we want to share in this segment. I remember a time I was just into my undergraduate and I had this great uh, blessing to sit right under Swami's throne for the bhajans. So, you know, Swami is sitting on the majestic throne with the tiger head, his feet there, and I was there right below that tiger head. And that is where I would sit every day. That was my place for bhajan. So I was in a very comfortable position in, in all senses of the term. I was very comfortable. So one day, uh, Swami called my parents and I for an interview. So when I went into the interview room, Swami asked my parents, how is Ravi? So my parents, as they always do, they said, Swami, he is your child. So, meaning whatever he is, he is yours. <laughs> no, we have nothing to do with him. So, and he said, Swami, he is your child. So he has to be a good boy, that kind of a thing. So he said, Swami, he is your child. So is he good? Yes. They said, yes, Swami, he is a good child. Swami said, no, he is not. And then, yeah, my stock price fell. But that, was, <laughs> but that was a local thing happening in the interview room. So then I was wondering why I was not a good child. And Swami said, he sits there right below me for bhajans. But during bhajans, he never looks at me. He is more intent on playing the khanjira. <laughs> so you know, this, you, every bhajan session you tend to learn some new beats. And then you know, you are... So, you know, can you just imagine, I, I cannot imagine right now that Swami was sitting there, but then you're a student and this is what happens when you're a student many times. You're lost without the guidance of the Guru. And he said, no, he's more intent on playing the Khanjira. So I then realized that I used to look down, probably at the most look into the tiger <laughs> and not look at Swami and I would be playing the Khanjira. Swami said, he's more intent on playing the Khanjira and he does not look at me during bhajans. Oh my God, I felt at that moment, my God, what a huge uh, you know, mistake I have made. I caught hold of Swami's feet and I said, no Swami, I'll always look at you. But this is the lesson that he has taught. Basically, it means it's not just physically looking at him. It means that my focus is not on Swami. You know, whenever we do anything, a bhajan is an act of prayer to Swami. So when we pray to Swami, we must have our focus on Swami rather than the implements that we use while praying for Swami. You know, while doing puja, if you're intent on the spoon or on the water or on the jug, you know, that is not prayer. So that is what he meant. Looking at him is focusing on him. So it's not important that we are near to him. I was sitting as near as anybody could to Swami, but that is not important. I was not dear to him. So Swami taught me that lesson that you have to be near and dear. And in such a beautiful way he taught me, saying that no, he is intent on playing the khanjira, which meant no, not the implements. Concentrate on me, on Swami. That was the lesson I learned then. Yeah. Beautiful lesson. Really. I too had a lesson regarding bhajans. Uh, it was in my second year post-graduation and we were very few of us as bhajan singers. And we would get chances every day to sing in front of Swami. And so, you know, 
uh, I, you know, I call it the, uh, the ultimate pump uh, machine. When you sit over there, you know, and pss, 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 the ego is growing, the collar is going up because we are second PG, you know, second year post-graduation, we can almost do whatever we want in Bhagwan's presence, sing whatever we want. And um, so one day I was slotted for uh, the seventh bhajan uh, and after the sixth bhajan, Swami took Aarti. Uh, and it, typically we would have six, seven, eight bhajans, you know, uh, every evening. Uh, any bhajan it could be after which Swami could take Aarti. Typically Swami would sit for seven bhajans, that day I was singing the seventh, after the sixth bhajan, Swami took Aarti. The next day I was singing the sixth bhajan and after the fifth bhajan, Swami took Aarti. Uh, the following day, I was singing the fourth bhajan, uh, the fifth bhajan, and after the fourth bhajan, Swami took Aarti. And now immediately when such a thing happens, you know, the alarm bell start ringing, and we have, uh, we have a bhajan convener of ours, a very elderly sir, who has terrific powerful antennas. <laughs> okay, and he will be catching all these signals. I'm sure many of our brothers know whom I'm talking about. And uh, so even as I figured out that, oh my God, something is happening over here, okay, that this is happening way too often, and it's not, uh, not such a good thing to happen. Um, I tried to kind of, you know, I knew something was wrong, so I immediately after Aarti, and every day I was singing Aarti, immediately after Aarti, I'm running away, and sir, no, no, come here, come here, come here. So he told, you know, what's happening? You think about it. Okay, so I told, no, sir, nothing. I mean, Swami just was busy, and so that day it went. The following day, I was singing the first bhajan. I was slotted to sing Ganesh bhajan. The bhajans were outside, is where we currently do bhajans, not in the bhajan hall in Prashant Ilim. And I, as, I, you know, as I was slotted for the first bhajan, in my mind I was thinking, Swami, aaj kidar jaoge aap? <laughs> aaj kahan bhaag ke jaoge? <laughs> Ganesh bhajan ga raho mein. Okay, you can't go. And if you don't have bhajans, it's not my problem. Means if you don't have bhajans at all, it's not my problem again because you were busy. You know, you, that, that blame cannot come on me. So I was, you know, kind of today, definitely that ice is going to break and things like that. Slotted for the first bhajan and uh, Swami calls four speakers that day to speak, <laughs> you know, in front of him. And none of those f four speakers had actually prepared for a talk. Okay, so they just came, rattled out something, but Swami was extremely happy. And I'm looking at the time and, you know, it's been an hour and I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, what's going to happen? But Aar anyway, it's not my problem. Mangal Arati, one more day. <laughs> <laughs> one more day of Mangal Arati, but it was not to be. Can you believe what happens that day? Four speeches get over and Swami looks at the primary school children and tells, Eroj Nu Pardandi, you sing bhajans today. <laughs> and we had half an hour of primary school children singing bhajans that day. Okay, and you can imagine, you know, I can still remember that day, you know, those, I mean, it was a golden day for them because they never get to sing and they were like, Raza Vilola, you know, you know, they were all in full josh that day. And I am crestfallen over here wondering what had hit me that day. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, with due respect to primary school children. Um, you know, we think we are great singers, that's what. And uh, needless to say, after the bhajans, our bhajan convener walked up to me and said, take a break. You know? <laughs> Take a break, contemplate, introspect, see what's happening. And you know, as much as it is funny now, you can imagine what, what, what would have gone when you have simply stopped to sing, you know, you have been asked to stop singing bhajans. Why? Because God himself does not like your singing. Because there is something wrong with you. And for the next 40 days, every day I would sit at the back of the bhajan group. And every single day after that, Swami had bhajans. You know, and every single day I would, you know, lose my chance. And you know, day after day, week after week, bhajans are going, Swami's enjoying bhajans, but I'm not singing. And every day I would go back after bhajans and I would go to the music room, take harmonium, and I would sing and practice. And I was wondering, when is this going to end? You know, because those 40 days were like endless days. And at the end of the 40th day, means one day sir just called me and said, okay, today you sing the third bhajan. And, um, it was Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, that bhajan I was slotted to sing, uh, third. And again, once again, Swami was sitting outside. And that day, Swami calls six speakers to speak. Okay? Six speakers, each spoke for 10, 10, 15 minutes, one, one and a half hours, one hour, 15 minutes over. And, uh, and so I was thinking that mostly today also there won't be bhajans. Because, I mean, it's already one and a half hours over and Swami has sat for a very long time. And as the sixth speaker finishes, Swami looks at the bhajan group and say, let us have two bhajans. 
okay mine is the third slot okay and in my mind i'm thinking what is your problem okay <laughs> why can't you just raise one more finger of yours <laughs> you very very well know that i am slotted at 3 okay and as the first two bhajans were going on i am broadcasting prayers at high bandwidth okay i am taking all the bandwidth possible of kulvant all and i am just pushing my prayers through saying please swami don't do this i am finished i am my career is over you know my my bhajan career again it was mine you know and you know as as those prayers are having swami so swami you tell that you only sing you know you only sing through us then why are you doing this you know and as these prayers were strengthening within okay and i was kind of figuring that no this is the end of it and you know i'm nothing swami in those days you know swami would reach out and hold that brass handle which would would and that was the signal for the aarti to be taken and as the second bhajan gets over swami's hand goes out to you know hold the brass railing my heart sinks the person apujari is about to light the you know the aarti and as he's getting up swami says one more bhajan we will have <laughs> and i remember that day swami stood swami stood for my entire bhajan again for the entire bhajan swami stood and that day from the depths of my heart i said allah hu akbar oh allah you are great you know he was uh, here was allah standing in front of me and he stood for the entire bhajan mind you those were the days when swami had a lot of pain in his hip he stood for the entire bhajan and after the bhajan he just looked at me looked at the pujari and said now let us have aarti you know and i still remember after that lots of brothers came and told me oh ame brother terrific yeah swami stood for your entire bhajan only i knew what swami had done for me that day he, he had stood for the entire bhajan undertaking so much pain on his physical form only to know have you now at least learnt the lesson that i wanted to teach you that if you have ego you know he says if you have ego he goes okay you have ego you can never that bhajan will just not reach anything that we do if we have that feeling that i am doing it whether it's narayan seva whether it is bhajans whether it is balvikas whether it it may be anything the moment it says swami i am dedicating this to you it's over even that feeling that i am dedicating no swami you it's only you it's only by your power as it is said no mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate girim swami said ulta also can happen uh, vachalam karoti mukam also can happen if he can make a dumb person speak he can also make us talkative person dumb and that's what he had done for to me for 40 days and no wonder that lesson has you know driven deep into my my heart just as you say that how he can make even a dumb person speak he can you know he can as well take away speech from somebody who can who's a very talkative person and amaze lesson as to how swami grounded him how swami brought him back he deflated him as much as he was getting inflated he deflated him in that period of 45 days I remember this other story. Uh, this happened to an elder brother of ours who was also a bhajan singer, and he was seated in the front row when Swami was giving his discourse. And after the discourse, Swami started singing a bhajan. And as Swami is singing the bhajan, Swami is looking at this brother and indicating to ask him what is the next line. Seemingly, Swami has forgotten the next line of the bhajan. so he immediately caught that and he mouthed the next line to swami swami caught it swami continued the bhajan he finished the bhajan looked at his brother smiled gave him a beautiful smile saying thanks for bailing me out it ended on the next next fe- festival day again swami is giving a discourse again after the discourse swami is singing and again he indicates to this brother that day's bhajan also swami has forgotten and this brother was a little more alert this time and he helped swami again the same thing happened he gave him a big smile blessed him and sat the next festival day came this brother was very sure i am going to be needed <laughs> two times i am on a hat trick swami is going to need my help today and on that day also swami forgot right and he was ready he was apparently he was sitting with his you know ready i know the next line which which line do you want me to help you <laughs> and he helped swami that day no and, and i remember this brother telling when he was narrating that you know he was so puffed up at that moment because the entire world goes to god for help but god comes to me for help <laughs> you know that is the feeling yeah. he was getting <laughs> so a couple of days later swami comes to the bhajan hall before bhajans and uh, swami looks at this brother and asks him uh, what are you singing today and he says swami i'm singing 
ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಹೇ ಮುರಳೀಧರ ಶೇಷ ಶೈಲವಾಸ ಶೇಷ ಶೈಲವಾಸ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಶೇಷ ಶೈಲವಾಸ ಹೌ ಡಸ್ ದಟ್ ಭಜನ್ ಗೋ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ರೀಕಾಲ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಾಟನ್ ಯು ಸಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಐ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಓಕೆ ವಾಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಸಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ಟೆ ಡೇ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಎಸ್ಟೆ ಡೇ ಐ ಸ್ಯಾಂಗ್ ಹಿ ನೇಮ್ ದ ಭಜನ್ ಯು ಸೆಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಎಸ್ಟೆ ಡೇ ಐ ಸ್ಯಾಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಭಜನ್ ಓಕೆ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ರೀಕಾಲ್ ಹಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇಜ್ ಓಕೆ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಭಜನ್ ಸಮ್ ಭಜನ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ ನೋ ಸಮ್ ಭಜನ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಸ್ಲೇಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಾಟನ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಫಾರ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಬಿಗ್ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಪೈ ದಟ್ ಇ ಏಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಡೇ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಯು ವಾಸ್ ಸೋ ಹಂಬಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಟು ಅಮೇ ಹಿ ಸೆಟ್ ಐ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅ ಬಿಗ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟೇಕ್ ಐ ಮೇಡ್ ಬೈ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ನೋ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಸೊ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಅಮೇ ಸೆಟ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅಸ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹುಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಗೋ ರೇಸಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಗುರು ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟೀಚ್ ಅಸ್ ಅ ಲೆಸನ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಪದ್ಯಮ್ ಶಾಲ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ರವಿ ಭಯ ಟು ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಎನ್ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ಯು ನೋ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಸುಲೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸೆಂಟಿಮೆಂಟ್ of how this worldly education this outside bahya education can be given to us by our parents but the ultimate atmic knowledge can be given to us only by guru and guess what we have found the vishwa guru with us i'll request bahuvidha mulaina ಲೌಕಿಕ ಪಥ ಮುಲೋ ಮನ ಕುಚ್ಚು ಪಿದರಯ್ಯ ತಲ್ಲಿ ತಂದ್ರಿ ಆತ್ಮವಿದ್ಯನು ಗರುಪ ಗುರುವು ಕೇ ಸಾಧ್ಯಮು ಮನಕು ದೋರಿಕೆ ನಯ್ಯ ವಿಶ್ವ ಗುರು ವಿಶ್ವ ಗುರು ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಜಾಯ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಶ್ವ ಗುರು ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವುಡ್ ಟೀಚ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಲೆಸನ್ಸ್ ಐ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಆನ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಲೆಸನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹೌ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಡೂ ಭಜನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ how important you know these bhajans are for swami and should be for us one of our brothers um you know he had his he had to go to anantapur to actually get braces fitted on his uh, teeth and he was a bhajan singer and uh, he wanted to inform swami that he is not going to be in prashanti nilayam the next day because he had to go to anantapur to get his braces fixed so he got an opportunity he told swami swami tomorrow i won't be there for bhajans swami asked him why he said swami i have to go to anantapur to get my braces fixed so swami said uh, okay so you will not be able to make it in time for bhajans so he told no swami i won't be able to make it then swami said simply to him so what at 515 which was the time bhajan started wherever you are you start singing i will be there with you <laughs> right i felt you know this was such a beautiful message that swami has given in fact to all of us isn't it can we give that one time during the day for swami absolutely wherever we are we may be in the metro we may be in the local train we may be in our buses we may be in the car we may be in our offices every day that one particular time absolutely non negotiable swami this moment is for you because at that moment then we can commune with swami right there is no place that we don't have to come to dharmakshetra we don't have to come to prashanti nilayam wherever we are the moment we think of him that becomes prashanti nilayam isn't it so this was a beautiful life lesson that swami had taught that wherever you are at that particular time you think of me i will be with you because timeliness and punctuality is another thing that was so dear to swami's heart we know that you know anywhere in prashant nilayam if you see 9 o'clock morning bhajan will start yes it will start 5 o'clock or 5:15 whenever swami would change if the time is set it is set so for swami though he is kala titaya but for him kala is such an important thing so you know if even if he were standing in the bhajan hall and generally chatting with the boys 
and then he would keep looking at the clock to see if you know if it has become five o'clock in those days in the bhajan hall. The moment it strikes five, he'll say, "Ah, start." And then he, being Swami, he you know he can choose to change the time. He can choose to do anything he wants. He would stand there by chance. He's chatting with us, and then he looks up at the clock, and the second hand has, hand has gone five seconds beyond five o'clock. <gasps> oh, you know he would do that as if he's made a big mistake. <laughs> and then he'll say, "Start, start, start." You know, this is another lesson for us that you know being on time is very, very important. Uh, in fact, it's a very, us. very important part of our spiritual sadhana. Swami says in Dhyana Vahini also. Swami says once you have fixed one particular time for your daily. you know your commune with swami you have to stick to that particular time come what may this there's another thing i remember uh, this was when i was in my school uh, there was this very very senior devotee uh, he was not a student but he would sit along with us and sing bhajans in the bhajan hall and then uh, he was a wonderful singer and swami would enjoy his bhajans but one day this very strange incident happened swami came and sat before the bhajans he came and sat on the throne and uh, he spoke to this gentleman who was in our midst uh, he asked him uh, out of the blue how is your mother so he said uh, swami she is okay then swami looked at him sternly and said how is your mother then you know his confidence became a little lesser he whispered saying she is okay swami then swami said pointed and said hey tell me truthfully how is your mother and he said Swami, she is not well. Then Swami, you know, it is. He was telling this person, but obviously it is a lesson for all of us. Swami said, "This person's mother, somewhere in interior Maharashtra, she is alone. She is unwell. He is the son. He thinks that leaving his sick mother there and coming here and singing for me will please me. No, it will not please me." He said, "Your place is next to your mother, so that is your duty." first take care of your parents take care of your mother who is a, then only i'll be pleased it is not that for the sake of attending bhajan we can so we can forgo our primary duty so this is how swami you know stresses matra devo bhava pitra devo bhava that is our primary duty and so beautifully you know it, as if it is a lesson for one person but it is a lesson for all of us and so that one fine day i can also share it with everybody who has gathered that this is what swami says not that leaving everything and i will come close my eyes and sing bhajan for swami he will be extremely happy with me no we we'll attend to our primary duties first like taking care of our parents then comes a, that is a true prayer actually then comes our other uh, forms of prayer so this is the other lesson as guru has taught and if we say that swami is our guru and we are his students who is exactly a sai student Swami had once told that just by studying in the Shri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning, you don't become a Sai student. You have to study Shri Satya Sai, then you become a Sai student. And in fact, in that sense, each one of us have the opportunity to be a Sai student. We may not be all SSS IHL students, we, but we all have the opportunity to be SSS students. And in that sense, we all of us are Sai students. And obviously, when you are Bhagwan student, everything is not rosy. there are those moments when swami will test you to know whether just like you know we in our college we have something called continuous internal evaluation cie we call it just like that bhagwan also is continuously internally evaluating us are we ready for that next for you know for the next grade for the next class uh, it so happen and and when swami does that those moments are very painful and at that moment you really wonder you know why are you doing this uh, what joy do you get out of testing me you know and i remember one of these brothers uh, swami would speak to him very often and lots and all of a sudden you know he went into this particular zone when swami just stopped talking to him and it has happened to almost all of us and in fact the greatest lessons is when we when this particular thing happens when swami just stops talking to us and this boy you know month after month passed by swami wouldn't even look at him swami wouldn't take his letter and uh, so he wrote a particular letter to swami and in that he mentioned this you know word he said swami why are you torturing me you know why are you torturing me by doing this and uh, that day swami came and picked this letter from his from his hand and in fact he was very happy that at least swami took this letter and swami opens the letter and then looks at this guy and says this brother and says don't use words the meaning of which you don't know okay 
And so this boy was kind of, first of all, he, he didn't know whether to be happy because Swami was talking to him after so long. But then what is this Swami saying? Swami saying, don't use words, the meaning of which you don't understand. What did you say? Don't torture me. Do you know the meaning of torture? Okay, so you know what? He had just written the word. <laughs> he really didn't know the dictionary meaning of the word torture. He was wondering, that's what you've been doing to me, torture. And then Swami said, torture is when one person is hurting the other person and that person who is hurting is enjoying it. That is called torture. Do you think that when I don't talk to you, you think that I'm enjoying that process? Do you think, how, do you know how much pain I go through to teach you this lesson? How can you use a word like torture? Do you think I go through such a beautiful lesson that Swami is giving at that moment, right? That when he is actually teaching us those lessons, he is also, he's, Swami says, right, he's like a drill master. He knows exactly the pain of what we are going through because he's doing it and only then he's teaching us. So, you know, this is how the Guru actually teaches us. Amai, since you use the word lesson and evaluation and test, I want to narrate at this point. I am historically, I've had a bad history of being very weak at academics. And I've just barely managed to pass the education systems obstacles towards my, in the growth that I've had through life. And it so happened that, of course, I joined Swami's Institute for my MBA and I had my bachelor's in English literature. So when I joined for my MBA, the guys to my left and right were BCom students. So when we had papers like financial accounting, management accounting, quantitative methods, I have not even seen a ledger book in my life. And I'm, I'm supposed to be understanding everything. And obviously the, guy, the students who were with me, my classmates had a good amount of knowledge or they came from engineering background. Again, they had a lot of math. And my last math exam was my 10th class math, which I just managed to pass. So this was the background with which I joined for my MBA, highly ambitious to attempt to want to do an MBA. But I was very clear as to why I wanted to do my MBA. That was just to sing bhajans in front of Bhagwan and to be with Swami for that period. So in my first semester, I failed my quantitative techniques paper. And I wrote the exam again and I cleared it. In the second semester, that is, we took our second semester exams and we joined back after the vacation for our second year. This is in 2007, June. And the results came for the second semester, the April exams, it came at the, in the end of June on, on one day. And it so happened that we were in class, Siddharth should remember. We were sitting in class and it was between the second and the third hour that we got news that the results have come for the previous semester. And again, I'm somebody who has always run away from seeing my results. I would prefer somebody else coming and telling me whatever the result is, but I couldn't go through there and find my number and look for my marks. So one of my classmates was going and I told him, just look up my marks as well and come and tell me, I'll just sit in class. So he came back and he came and told me, uh, he obviously I could make out from his face that all is not well. <laughs> he said, uh, you have failed. I said, okay, which paper? He said, quantitative techniques two. I said, one only I didn't pass. How would I expect <laughs> to pass quantitative techniques two in the first attempt? He said, yeah, I, I, I didn't understand a lot of it, okay. I said, something else? He said, yeah, you have failed management accounting. One more maths paper, you know, number related paper I have to write a supplementary for. I said, oh gosh, okay. He said, you have failed one more. <laughs> I said, there's no other math paper in MBA. What, what else did I fail? He said, you have failed HR, human resources. I was totally taken aback because I knew for my language at least I should have been passed. And I definitely did not do that paper so badly that I would fail in it. I might not have got a good grade, but definitely I should have passed. I said, HR. He said, yeah, you failed in HR. Oh gosh, okay. And then somebody came and told me, uh, as per the rules, if you have failed more than two papers, you have to repeat that semester. Which means I have to discontinue in June, join back as a first year in November, and do that semester again. Now, this was a, a disappointment or a, or a failure way beyond what I have experienced before. I have failed before, <laughs> no problem, but to repeat a semester is a little, you know, out of the league. So the third hour got over, I was walking down the staircase and I reached the lobby of the, of the campus and the warden walked up. And the warden in, in his 
typical style. What is this? You have failed. I said, sir, I don't know, sir. Math papers, I'm, I'm not too good at it. Okay, when are you vacating hostel? He said. <laughs> sir, that gum which they used to put up the results, no, it's still wet. <laughs> it's not even dried. One hour only it's been, and you're already asking me to vacate the hostel. He said, yeah, you are not a student now. You have to discontinue, no? So if you are not a current student, you can't stay in hostel unless Swami says something. I said, sir, I'm going to apply for re-evaluation. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. You know, if one of the papers in re-evaluation, if something comes through, I, I can continue. I'll just have to write two papers. So he said, okay, fine. You go ahead, apply for re-evaluation, but be ready. Be ready to pack your bags and leave. So unexpectedly, my mother lands up in Puttapati the next day. And obviously, I wanted to keep the news away from my family till re-evaluation happened. At least till re-evaluation results come. And it is that mother's instinct, something made her feel that something's not right. She boarded her bus from Chennai and she just landed up the next morning. And I was having extreme acidity. So I was taken to GH for a checkup because I was physically looking very unwell because of all this tension that was building up inside. You're going to discontinue. What will my parents say? What will everybody say? How do I tell this to Swami and all of that? So I was taken to GH. The doctor administered saline for me and she instantly said, There's some, th this is not normal level of acidity. What is up? I said, no, I was trying to keep, all my dramatics was coming to the front. I was keeping a straight face and nothing, doctor, I don't know. I'm. Then my mother sensed something is up. Then I thought that was the most opportune moment to tell her, you know, lying in hospital bed, <laughs> drips being administered. So I thought, okay, the setting is fine to break the news. So then I broke the news to her. And she was obviously very upset. And then she said, uh, then the doctor discharged me. I was to go to Darshan that evening. So my mother wrote a letter and she said, if you get a chance, give this letter to Swami. So I took my mother's letter. I went to Bhajan Hall. I sat in Bhajan Hall. And on that day, as my luck would save me, Swami came very early. He came into the Bhajan Hall and even as he was sitting down, I was somewhere in the third or fourth row and he looked at me and said, come. So I went up to him and I gave my mother's letter. And I was very clear, I don't want to physically tell him that I have failed. You already know I have failed. I am talking to the omnipresent Swami, not the Chancellor Swami. So you continue the conversation on that plane, not on this plane. I am not going to tell you <laughs> from my mouth, Swami, I have failed. So he took the letter, he opened the letter. He started reading out my mother's letter to me. And then he looked, he pointed to me and he said, see what your mother has written here. So I turned around and I went closer to Swami and I read the letter. She had written in bold letters, Swami, you know what is best for, you know what is best. So I said, Swami, yes, Swami. I also believe that, Swami, you know what is best. Hmm, what are you going to do? He said, I said, Swami, they have told me to go now and come back in November. Again, you know, I'm just assuming that he knows why I'm going and coming back. I'm going back and coming back in November, Swami. Good. You go and come back. So I said, Swami, please be with me. He said, yes, I will be with you. You go. So I, with that, on that note, I came back, I packed my bags, I vacated hostel and made the warden very happy. And I went back to Chennai knowing that Something big has definitely happened. I'm missing a whole year. I will not be graduating in two years. But that one line that he said, I know what is best for you, was something that I was very firmly holding on to. I had absolute faith in that. I was very sure that he is doing it for, for a larger good. But even as you go back with that confidence, I was met with an overwhelming reception at Chennai. My family was very upset. My father was extremely upset. My brother was also a student of SSS IHL. And he had also done his MBA. So for him, it became a question of shame. Because he said, how will I go back to Parthi and see my teachers? You know, they will all ask me, what is this? Your brother is a failure. How will I go meet my friends in Parthi? And you won't believe it. For the six months that I was in Chennai from July to November, my brother didn't speak a word to me at home. We wouldn't even sit in the same room. If I walked in, he would walk out. And it was, it was very upsetting because 
Yeah, I'm, I failed at something that I'm not good at. And Swami said it is for my good. So why is it, why am I being treated in that way? But the only thing, I mean, obviously my family had to tell our relatives because suddenly you've come back, you're staying at home, you don't have anything to do. Just sit at home, what can you do? So uh, the only thing I could do was I, I went for coaching for management accounting and quantitative methods in the, in the hope that I can go back a little well prepared more than that. But then it was excruciating pain to stay at home. But where else can you stay? Where else will you go? And the only thing I could hold on to was Swami's words to me saying, I know what is best for you. I know what is good for you. And that he would be with me. And, but for that, I don't think I could have survived those six months. हो चांदनी जब तक रात देता है हर कोई साथ तुम मगर अंधेरों में ना So what happened after that? When, when did the good thing, when did the good tidings come? So I joined back in 2007, November for my second semester. And in 2008, at the end of 2008, April, when I had, I ought to have finished my MBA, I have finished my first year after two years. <laughs> so I joined back for my final year in 2008, June. And that was the year where I think I got the most number of chances with Swami. With regards to singing, bhajans, I got to act in so many dramas in his presence. And the cherry on that, on that sweet, top of that lovely sweet, was in 2009, April, Swami picked me to go with him to Kodekinal. And interestingly, in 2008, Swami did not go to Kodekinal. Right? So in my final year, what should have been my final year, if I had finished in 2008, I would not have got the chance to go with him to Kodekanal. It was because I was a final year in 2009 that I had the opportunity to go with him to Kodekanal. And in Kodekanal, something very interesting happened. And with that, I, I shall conclude. One day, uh, Swami had asked us, a couple of us to give a speech. And after the speech, we were seated around Swami. And I had, on that day, I, it was my chance to do Pad Seva for Swami. And Swami was having a conversation with the elders. And suddenly Swami looked at me and he said, uh, Hey, ni class lo enta mandi unnaru. How many boys are there in your class? And the only Telugu number I knew was Yabai, which is 50. <laughs> so I said, Swami, Yabai mandi unnaru. Confidently I replied. And uh, that was the number of MBA students in my batch was 50. And Swami immediately then looked at Professor Venkatraman. And he said, Chudu, Venkatraman, Idu class lo Yabai mandi unnaru, kani nenu vidu matrame tiskoni ochanu. Meaning, he said, this boy's class, there are 50 students, but he's the only one I have picked and brought with me. So my immediate reaction was to correct Swami, because in my batch with me, another eight students had come. We were about nine, 10 of us. So I almost corrected him saying, no, Swami, he's <coughs> final year, he's final year. We're all from this same class. Then I thought, okay, Swami is saying something. When you're not spoken to, just better to shut up. And I continued to press his feet. And then immediately hit, it hit me that from the 50 students of the batch of 2006, I was the only one sitting there that day. And I thought he was referring to the 50 from the batch of 2007. And he was so right when he said, obviously he was right when he said he's the only one. And when I look back, what is six months or one year in a lifetime when you get to stay with him under the same roof and spend the whole day with him for, for two weeks? What is one year? And even in that failure of my life, even in that moment of, of so-called failure, I only had benefits in it. You know, the only thing I gained, I only gained from that failure, I never lost anything. A failure means a loss. And therefore, he was so right when he told me that day in June, I know what is best for you. 
go through this now because something much better is in store for you if you're willing to put yourself through this now. So I really think that is one of those mantras that I have received from, from Swami. Every moment of our life, if we, are, if we are able to keep telling ourselves that this is for our good, we will never know it is for our good at that point of time. It is always in hindsight that we realize that things have played out so beautifully. And like they say, you, you don't know why a painter is using a particular shade or a particular color until the masterpiece is done. At that point, you think that's such an awkward color to use. But look at it in the end. Look at the grand picture at the end. And that is one of the biggest lessons that I have learned with him. As a, I've been so lucky to learn. I lost nothing. And you know, I went back and obviously I could now flout to my brother saying, I went to Kodai, man. Who cares if you fail three <laughs> subjects, six subjects? <laughs> you can't get back that. If only we just keep telling ourselves that it is all, all that happens is for our good. I think all of us would love to have such failures in our life. <laughs> if it can keep us closer to Swami. Seriously. <laughs> but it's so true, Siddharth, that when it is said that when the world walks out, he walks in. You know, we all heard of that lovely story where uh, this person prays to God and says, uh, please walk beside me when I'm in trouble. And then on the sands of time, when he was at his uh, you know, deepest agony, he found only one pair of footprints and then he told God, you deserted me when I was at my you know, deepest sorrow. And God said, no son, at that time I was carrying you. That set of footprints were mine. You know, so God never deserts us. And yes, uh, you know, your darkest times became your you know, brightest and happiest times. And it still but holds good. I mean, it, it was that Kodai trip which changed my entire life. That is, that is the trip where Swami spoke to me and told me to do what I'm doing today. None of that would have happened had I finished in 2008. So my life changed with that, that failure. And like I said, there, I lost absolutely nothing. I, I only gained and I continue to gain. Till this moment, I only continue to gain from that experience of the so-called worldly failure. And when brother said that when the world walks out, he walks in, I'm quickly remem uh, reminded of something that, uh, that happened in Delhi when Swami visited uh, Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee's house. Uh, it was in 2009 when Swami had visited Delhi. Uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee wasn't able to come to the international center or to, you know, to have Swami's darshan. But such a beautiful, wonderful devotee that he was, Swami went to his house uh, to visit him. And it was only a beautiful, intimate moment where only he and Atal uh, Swami were together. Uh, and as Swami came out, and he also came out to uh, bid farewell to Swami, Swami lo just looked at him and said, Dekho, uh, Vajpayee, jab tum prime minister tha, tumhare idhar udhar sab IAS officer, army, minister, sab log tha. Abhi koi nahi hai, lekin mein aya tumko milne ke liye. <laughs> Swami made it clear to him that even when nobody will be there with you, I will be there with you. I will come to see you. You know, that's the, that's the one beautiful thing with when you said, when the world walks out, I walk in. And I think that's what we all want, isn't it? There's one more very beautiful, I mean, there are innumerable lessons that we can learn from Swami's life. That's why he says, my life is my message. Uh, just a very quick one, I remember one of our brothers had told us, Swami was returning back from Kodai Kinal. It was the hot summer month of May. Swami was returning back from Kodaikanal by car. It was Salem, you know, probably one of the hottest places in South India. And as Swami's car was going, Swami heard strains of bhajans going on. Here were a set of devotees who were sitting by the roadside, okay, and doing bhajans because they knew that Swami's car was going to go that way. It was 50 degrees, you can imagine. And Swami said, stop the car. Okay, and uh, they stopped the car. And Swami, you know, got down from the car, barefoot, Swami was standing on that hot tar road, okay, listening to these bhajans. And the brother who was telling us was, was telling that the police, you know, who were standing next to Swami in his security, they were barely able to, you know, stand on that hot, they were kind of jumping in spite of wearing socks. socks. And here was Swami standing barefoot, beautifully enjoying the entire bhajan. In fact, he, this brother offered Swami, you know, a pair of footwear and Swami said, no, no. keep the footwear in. And he stood barefoot on the road. And now, you know, you, we, 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 we may all think that Swami is God, you know, he can do this. But you know, this brother told us when Swami came back and sat in his car, Swami had blisters on his foot for the next four days. You know, he takes upon himself, but he says, this is nothing compared to the love that I've got over there. These are the beautiful moments, these are beautiful lessons that this Guru, this Sadguru teaches us. 
there are, there are like amaya was saying there are so many you know snippets of these lessons every time he would speak to the boys there was some lesson in it for uh, for all of us you know how many things has he taught us this sadguru right from small little things as siddhartha started he would come and inquire about idlis to the primary school children no? how many idlis did you eat have as the higher secondary school students brinjal curry you know this is what he starts with and we have heard from our hostel teachers that earlier on swami used to visit the hostel when boys were away in the college and he would go to the kitchen and he would taste the rasam to see if it was palatable and he would physically go and verify if the toilets were clean and sir the sir who narrated this to us he said i would i would you know pray to swami saying swami please don't come he said no i want to see only if i go you will i will know whether you are doing a good job or not which avatar would have done something as trivial as this he has even taught uh, some of our brothers were saying when the first cardiac symposium happened in prashanti nilayam swami nobody had any idea they were top you know top notch doctors coming from all over the world the first time prashanti nilayam was hosting somebody from outside swami would go to every room where the doctor was going to stay and he actually taught housekeeping to all the brothers you know he would he saw whether the bed sheets were put properly whether there were towels in the bathroom whether there was soap there were shaving kits everything he said our brothers were telling us we learned housekeeping from bhagwan himself and um, those of us who have been involved with the dramas the convocation dramas and the sports meet dramas swami's attention for detail would you couldn't a single character's makeup he would be able to catch he would tell if he had enough makeup or if he had too much makeup he would you know he would come go down to that level of detail with with the boys who used to do dramas has he he has cared for all of us when we were sick he would care like i said personally he would care for us or if any of our family members were sick anybody in our family we could just get up and go to swami and say swami this and then he would comfort us one vibhuti packet here one word one pat that comfort that he would give and from right you know ranging from all such you know small small things to the very fact that all of us seated over here so many students almost 15000 students have got education absolutely free of cost the top notch education he has given us everything in our life no wonder he is called the chancellor of our university because he always gave us chances you know we call him because he was a chancellor because he gave us lots of chances because this chancellor was not of this university this chancellor is of this entire universe and what what can we do to him now, this is a beautiful song which captures this particular sentiment of swami how much you have done for us tumne kya kya kiya hai हमारे लिए तुमने क्या क्या किया है हमारे लिए हम न कर पाए कुछ भी तुम्हारे लिए तुमने क्या क्या किया है हमारे लिए हम न कर पाए कुछ भी ऐसा किए तुमने खुदा है सनम सौ जन्म तुमको देते तो वो भी है कम कितने ऐसा किए तुमने खुदा है सनम सौ जन्म तुमको दे दे तो वो भी है कम तुमने पतझड़ को सावन के धारे दिए तुमने अशकों के बदले सितारे दिए तुमने क्या क्या किया है हमारे लिए तुमको मालूम था ना बह जाएंगे 
ये थपेड़े न तूफा के सह पाएंगे तुमको मालूम था ना बह जाएंगे ये थपेड़े न तूफा के सह पाएंगे फिर भी बाहो के तुमने सहारे दिए तुमने डूबे हुओ को किनारे दिए तुमने क्या क्या किया है हमारे लिए हम न कर पाए कुछ भी तुम्हारे लिए तुमने क्या क्या किया है हमारे लिए तुमने क्या क्या किया है हमारे लिए इवन वाइल्ड वी से हम ना कर पाए कुछ तेरे लिए देर आर दीज ब्यूटिफुल एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ सच डिवोटीज हुव डन सो मच फॉर भगवान and those little acts that actually we don't have to do so much for swami we just have to do whatever we are doing with all our heart and he is there to take that just reminded of yet another beautiful experience that one of our brothers very close to swami he narrated to us um he was he used to he had the opportunity to serve bhagwan he would stand when swami was staying in purnachandra he would be in uh, with swami in purnachandra and he would stand outside the door when swami would walk back after the evening darshan morning and evening darshan as he would walk walk back and often it would happen you know swami would have taken so many letters that both his hands will be full full of letters and uh, so he would look at swami and swami would simply signal him to come close you know to take letters and such was swami's you know once again his etiquette even letters which he wanted to give he would always give with right hand he will never give even that with left hand you know so th- so this was known to this particular brother one day he noticed one evening when swami was walking back after uh, the evening darshan he noticed sorry the morning darshan he noticed swami was holding a bag in his hand in his right hand and letters in his left hand so he was quite intrigued what is this bag that swami is holding and swami called him so he immediately ran and he thought swami will give him the bag you know whatever is in his right hand so swami gave him all the letters with his left hand so he was even more intrigued this is something swami never does that means something is there in that bag i have to find out what is there you know that's how we all are right we want to know uh, behind the scenes what's what's re- happening so uh, swami took that bag very promptly with him to his room and so you know this this uh, curiosity was growing inside in the afternoon swami came down this bag was in swami's hand and swami said come all of you sit down so there were three of them they all sat around swami and out of the bag came groundnuts you know groundnuts with peels you know and one by one swami is opening up the peel and giving eat it eat, eat this and uh, it so happened that what ensued for the next 15 20 minutes was a little picnic session over there where each one was peeling and giving to the other you know and so much so that those peels were even falling on swami's robe and so this brother was trying to clean up and swami said no 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 leave that let it be we'll do it at the end let's enjoy and even as this was happening this brother was wondering my god what a blessed devotee it would have been you know swami is eating with so much relish so he wanted to know who is this person you know who is groundnut swami is eating with so much relish it's almost like you know krishna and sudama and so he they wanted to ask but you cannot really ask swami who gave you this and you know so at the end of this little picnic session you know that uh, this sharing and all that swami himself said do you know who is this person who gives me this and so now here was you know swami was going to tell said long back there was a lady you know who used to come to the patha mandiram days and she came for one of the birthday celebrations and she wanted to do something for swami but she didn't know how to cook she didn't know how to decorate so she was not able to participate at all in those celebrations and she felt so sad swami i am not good at anything what can i offer you she simply thought that swami the best i can do is i grow coconuts sorry groundnuts i grow groundnuts in my farm i will come and offer this to you and swami says from that year every single year almost for 40 years this lady has been giving groundnuts to swami swami picks it picks her out from the darshan lines and takes these 
he enjoys and then Swami said, no, now whatever groundnuts are remaining, no, put it in another thing because I have to give this bag back to her. Because <laughs> this lady Papam has only one bag in which she brings this every year for me. You know, such is the devotee, hum na kur kar paaye kuch tere liye. We don't have to, we just have to be like this beautiful devotee who was giving us, who had given this Bhagavan this beautiful gift. Almost, uh, almost reminiscent of, uh, you know, uh, Shabari of those days, you know, almost like that. I'm also reminded of another story where um, every birthday of Swami, the hostel, the boys hostel, senior boys hostel, they bake a cake for Swami and Swami would cut it on his birthday. So there is this uh, cake department in the hostel. So in 2011, November, um, the boys in the hostel were pretty distraught and they said, what are we going to make this cake for, you know? Swami is not going to be there to cut it. All these years he has cut and physically he is not going to be there to cut the cake. So they were feeling very dejected and then they said, okay, let's, let's make some cake, you know, not with the usual josh with which they make a lot of decoration and, you know, colorful big cake. They made a cake um, because, okay, it is for Swami, we are going to take it to the mandir anyway. So they bake a cake, they take it. So one of the boys who was in this uh, cake department, he was also distributing prasadam that day after the mo morning session, the bhajans were going on, birthday morning. So the cakes were all kept, lots of cakes, they were kept on the upper portico and this boy went to distribute prasadam. So that uh, central gate is there in the Kulvant hall, so he went beyond that to distribute the prasadam. So there, there is the statue of uh, Rama, Lakshmana and Mother Sita there with Hanuman. So there, up to there he went, he saw one lady, a foreigner lady, doing arati there from that distance. And it was not with an arati plate. She had a cake in her hand with which she was doing arati to Swami. So this boy was very intrigued. He waited for her to finish doing the arati. He gave the prasadam and then he asked, Ma'am, can I ask you what is this arati that you're doing? And what she said was such a beautiful lesson. She said, you know, for the last 15 years, seeing how you boys have been baking such lovely cakes for Swami and getting it cut by him, I was so inspired. I don't, I have never had the chance to come and have a cake cut by Swami on the portico, but at least I could offer it to him from here. So for 15 years, she has been baking that cake and offering it to Swami from that far. And it didn't matter to her that it was 2011 November or 2010 November, Swami was physically present, not present. She was still offering it to Swami with that same devotion. And this touched the boy so much that, you know, he went and shared it with all, all his other brothers in the cake department. He said, this is what the kind of devotion that we need. You know, that is so inspiring. This is the kind of devotion we must have for Swami. That what we have had all along, we will continue to have all along, irrespective of where we are. When, when Amai was narrating the story of how Swami used to come, come back from Dashan holding so many letters, I remember, I remember a story that one of our teachers, professors told us. He had the opportunity to walk behind Swami during Darshan. And he would be there to assist Swami if Swami collected letters and wanted to give it to somebody to hold. He would be the person. And he was telling us how on one particular day, so he was walking behind Swami. And Swami had already collected a good bunch of letters from the lady's side. And on the gent's side, he took a letter from this one gentleman he took the letter and he took the cover and put it into that pile of letters that he already had and he walked ahead and even as sir was just following Swami, that person it seems he caught hold of sir and said see that cover which I just gave, just be careful because Swami has put it into that pile, it has a DD for 20 lakhs just, just watch out and Swami heard this so it seems Swami came back took that letter, gave it back to that gentleman and walked ahead. And sir obviously was not, was a spectator and he continued to follow Swami. Further ahead on the gent's side, Swami was collecting more letters. He took one more letter and he turned back to sir and gave it to him and said, keep this safely, keep this aside. So sir took that cover and put it in his pocket. Swami finished his darshan, Swami went, to the, went into the interview room and sir still had this cover. 
And after a while, Swami opened the door and beckoned him to come inside. So he went inside, Swami sat, Swami said, where is that cover? So he fished it out and he handed it to Swami. Swami tore it open and what Swami took out, there was a letter and there was a counterfoil kept along with the letter. A bank chalan. Bank chalan. Counterfoil of a bank chalan kept along with the letter. And Swami said, see, see what he has written. That person who offered that cover was the local postman. And he had written saying, Swami, this is my monthly offering to you. And the bank chalan was for 10 rupees. And then Swami told sir, you know, he forgoes his lunch every day to save money. And he gives it in the bank every month. And he will hand over a letter and the chalan to me every month. This money is far more important to me than that referring to the other gentleman who wanted to make a show out of, he probably didn't want to make a show, but the very fact that he was saying it out to somebody else, what we make to Swami is just between Swami and us. So Swami said, this is far more important to me, more valuable to me. This 10 rupees is far more valuable to me than that money. So just think about the kind of offerings that people make so humble. In everybody's offering is humble in its own way, but it is not the, it is just the intent behind it. It's just the feeling with which we offer that matters to Swami and nothing else. It's almost as if, it's almost as if these devotees are teaching us that, you know, if you were to open our hearts, Swami, you will find only you sitting there. And that is where we all have to be. That position where if Swami were to say, who is in your heart, if he were to open our hearts, he would see only him. Let us uh, try and capture the sentiment through this song.
तेरे बिन जिया जाए न साई प्यारे साई हमारे दिल की ये सुन लो कहानी तेरे बिन जिया न जाए सुनी लगे even while we contemplate this way probably one of the greatest or probably the most important moments in our life has been this 24th of april 2011 isn't it where we miss that particular form somehow we i just feel that you know only one thing has changed since 24th of april swami's address he has simply moved from yajur mandiram into hriday mandiram because that is where we are we are trying to tell him that you know dil khol dekho ye mera and you will find only that and i think that is what we need to hold on to that is our true source that is the destination that we need to go back to uh, there's this one other beautiful song which captures this particular uh, you know the sentiment chalo mane jaye ghar apne ah चलो मन जाए घर अपने इस पर देश में वो पर दे ये चलो मन जाए घर आंख जो भाए वो को जो भाए वो कोरा सपना सारे पर कोई ना अपना ऐसे झूठे प्रेम में पढ़े ना काहे जिये चलो मन जाए घर अपने साचे प्रे ज्योत जला के साचे प्रेम की ज्योत जला के मन सुन मेरी कान लगा के मन सुन मेरी कान लगा 
राह चले चलो मन जाए पर अपने चलो so many times in his discourses you know swami had said i am with you above you below you around you beside you well he definitely meant it and took it more seriously than than we did we wish we had a little more time where we could share some of those lovely experiences where swami has shown us we had some more but then we saw the time and then we thought you know that we should probably wrap it up there's long distances that you all have to go go back to i'm sure maybe there'll be another occasion that we can we can probably come here and and share 15 minutes oh, 15 minutes okay. i'll start sure <laughs> <laughs> okay this is an incident that that happened to me last year in the month of uh, february i mean this is this is what i mean why we wanted to say this is you know nothing has changed and probably everything has changed right we are probably living in those times where nothing has changed and everything has changed the only thing that has changed probably is we need to go inward because probably that is the only source which is absolutely permanent swami over here through his you know his, his physical moving away from us has probably told us that even this physical form is not capable of giving you the ultimate happiness for that you have to go within because that is my true address and what we wanted to share with you are some of those moments that have happened after his physical demise his so called physical demise only to show us that you know what now i am closer to you now i'm just a thought away from you you know so i mean these these were some of the experiences that we wanted to share i'm sorry i i just thought i'll give a little Thanks introduction to this you part. set the stage very nicely <laughs> so sometime in the month of february last year i had a dream one morning and in my dream swami comes for darshan he stands outside the interview room and swami says final year boys get up and i was in the front and for some strange reason i stood up and i turned back and saw the upper veranda there were two more boys who stood up one of whom was actually a third year undergrad final year boy who was standing last year so i looked at swami and i said swami there are only three of us Swami said, "It's okay. Come in." So we went in. Swami sat on his sofa, and I noticed that those two boys were a little hesitant to sit close to Swami. They were sit seated a little behind. So I took the courage to go and sit next to Swami. I was sitting at his feet, and Swami was talking to us about right conduct. Swami was saying how we should have right conduct, and in that context, Swami was saying, "Right is right, even if only one person is doing it." wrong is wrong even if everybody is doing it you should be like that africa boy so when swami said africa boy the other two students who were seated with me didn't know whom swami was referring to but in my dream i happened to know i don't know how i know but in my dream i knew the moment swami said africa boy i knew whom he was referring to so swami looked at me i looked at them i saw that they had a blank face so i said uh, brother swami is referring to one of our old students anmol mehta i'm even giving a name in my dream and swami is saying ha that boy so i turned back i told swami swami can i tell them swami says yes tell them so then i am narrating to those two students about anmol mehta i have no idea now just a pause i did have a batchmate by name anmol mehta but i have not even seen him after 2008 i have no idea where he is what he is doing nothing just the, he is the only anmol mehta i know right so the name is what that is the name that i told swami and swami said yes tell them about anmol so i am telling them so, brother swami is talking about an old student anmol who studied here he is in africa 
In his workplace, in his factory, there was a strike, but Anmol felt it is not the right thing to do to participate in that strike, and Anmol refused to participate in that strike. So Swami is saying, you should, even if you're the only one doing it, right is right, even if you're the only one doing it, that is what Swami is referring to. Swami said, ha, atla undali, you should be like him. The dream went on, it ended, I woke up, and I was pleasantly surprised that where is that guy Anmol and how do I know some details that I'm shooting out to Swami in my dream and Swami is saying, yeah, that is what I'm referring to. So I shared this dream with one of my professors. And he also laughed and he said, oh really, how did you know about this boy? I said, I have no idea, but this is what happened in my dream, so strange. That was the end of it. Sometime in the end of March, the college closed for study holidays. So there was no, college was not working. And this professor was walking to college that morning at about nine-ish. And at the gate, there was a girl and a boy who was standing at the entrance of the college. So as sir approached them, they both wished sir. And that boy said, sir, I'm an old student who studied here. I've come to Parthi for the first time with my wife. I want to show her the campus where I studied. Can I show her the campus? So sir said, it's a study holiday. There are no students, so it should not be a problem. But you better ask the director's permission before you take her inside. So he said, where is the director's office? So sir showed him the director's office. Sir proceeded to his department, to his cabin. And uh, that was the end of it. So after 15, 20 minutes, that boy and that girl, his wife, they came to sir's cabin and that boy thanked sir and he said, thank you, sir. I met the director, he gave permission. I showed her the campus. I'm on my way out, I just wanted to thank you. So out of courtesy, sir said, sit, why don't you sit? And sir said, I'm sorry, I know you studied here, but I don't remember your name and all. Your face looks familiar. What is your name, where are you? He says, my name is Anmol Mehta. And this is very strange. So sir said, oh, okay. Okay, where are you now? Sir, I'm in Nigeria. Wow. So sir was very inquisitive. So he engaged him in a conversation. And then gradually sir asked him saying, uh, don't mind me asking this, but by any chance was there a strike in your workplace <laughs> that you refused to take part in? He said, no. No sir, nothing like that. So sir thought, okay, that was the end of it. <laughs> he left it at that. Then his wife prodded him, it seems. You forgot, no, that, that incident happened. You forgot about it. He said, ah, yes, sir, yes, sir, something happened. Sir said, yes, what happened? So then he tells sir that the employees in his organization, the majority of them got together and decided that they will go and storm into the management, to the management and tell, this is our condition. Pass this or we will not work. Anmol felt that their conditions were not right not correct what they were asking for. He did not want to go with the majority. But he was scared that if he was with the minority, he might get singled out later. So he was really upset and wondering what he should do. So it seems he came back home and he told his wife, saying, you know, this is what is going on. Tomorrow they all want to go to the management. I'm not feeling like that's the right thing to do. So what he decided was he just skipped work the next day. He took leave. That incident did happen. The majority went. So the following day when he went to office, nobody took offense of which side he was on because it, you didn't know which side he was on. But at least he had his conscience was at rest that he did the right thing and did not take part in what he felt was incorrect. He narrated the story to sir and said, why did you ask me this? And then sir asked him, do you remember your batchmate Siddhartha? He says, no. He says, no, he studied when you were in your batch. Now he's teaching in the English department. No, sir, I don't remember him. Okay. This is what happened. 15 days ago, he had a dream. And this is what happened in the dream. I believe when sir told him the dream, him and his wife just broke down crying. And he tells sir, sir, I'm coming after four or five years. And obviously, it's my first trip after Swami's Mahasamadhi. But what more proof do I need to know that Swami is watching over us every single moment? That he is, when you, are, when you follow the dictates of your heart, that is where he is and he's watching over you every single moment. I don't need to see him, but I just know that he's watching over me. Where, where is he? He's in Nigeria. Now you just take, when this whole thing happened and Anmol left Parthi that, that day. The subsequent day, sir told me about, you know what, I met Anmol <laughs> Mehta yesterday. I said, what? He said, yes, he is in Nigeria, Africa, and it really happened to him. I just could not believe it, but think of it. First of all, what are the chances that I know what is happening in somebody's life in Africa accurately? 
And I shared this dream with one professor in the entire campus. On a holiday, he's coming to college and he's the only teacher whom that boy crosses. Right? What are the chances of all of this? And that too, 15 days after I had the dream, this guy travels from Nigeria to Puttaparthi and meets just that one teacher. So it's, and if, you know, if Anmol had met me, I would have probably blurted it out to him without getting the information out of him. It happened to, it, the message went to Anmol through somebody else. There was a message for Anmol, there was a message for Sir, there was a message for me. And I think that is the message that I want to share with all of you. He is definitely watching over every single thing that we are doing. How else can you explain? It's not a coincidence. It cannot be so many coincidences cannot happen. Yeah, these, are, these are called coincidences. These are not coincidences. And that's why I said when, when Swami told in his discourses, I'm above you, below you, beside you, around you, he took it very seriously. Whether we took it seriously or we take it seriously or not, he is definitely watching over each and every one of us. There's another uh, wonderful incident which I heard from the person involved. This happened uh, at Swami's 89th birthday. It's year before last, 2014, November 23rd morning. There was a nice function in the Kulwant Hall. The governor of Karnataka had come for the function. He gave a nice talk. So the warden of the Brindavan campus was sitting there. And um, he was enjoying the morning function, the songs and uh, everything. But then there was one lingering thought in the mind. He said, yeah, nice speech by the governor, very inspiring, nice songs, everything is nice. But where is the birthday boy? You know, sir was just pining for Swami, thinking of Swami. You know, everything is very grand and nice, but we are missing that, that form. So where is the birthday boy? But anyway, this thought uh, left his mind and the morning function got over and they distributed uh, prasadam. So they gave him a sweet and sir had just stopped eating sweets a few days before that. So he took the prasadam and he looked around to see whom he could give after the arati was over. And he saw one student who was studying in Vrindavan, uh, who sir knew loved sweets. So he said, oh, I found the right person to give. I am not eating, he would love a second sweet. Hey, hey, come here and he gives him the sweet. He says, thank you, sir. And then he leaves and the warden leaves and the warden had to go to the university because a new vice chancellor was taking over. So there was a function to preside over. So he attended that function and then he had other things. He went for his lunch and came back to the old hostel in the evening. When he came back, a couple of boys came running to the warden and said, uh, sir, this boy, one boy, X, said he's been coming looking for you desperately throughout the day. So the warden said I was busy in something. What is the matter? If you find him, let him know that I am back. So they go and tell him and Warden is sitting in his room and this boy comes running and tells Warden, Sir, from morning I have been t trying to tell you this desperately. You gave me the sweet and you left. Yes, sir, I agree. I have a weakness for sweets. You are right. But Motichur Laddu is the one sweet which I don't like. Actually, that is the prasadam which was given on that day. He said, so in fact, sir, actually, I was looking around a little guilty. Whom else I could palm it off to, you know, <laughs> give the sweet to. So as he was waiting with two sweets in his hand, there was this pillar where the Vedam boys sit. So just uh, that pillar and this boy was standing between the pillar and him, one old man was there who had somehow crossed all the lines, barriers and come to where the students sit. And the old man said, I didn't get prasadam. Can some can you get prasadam for me? He asked this boy, and he's standing with the second moti chur laddu in his hand. He immediately gives it here, sir. Please take it. And uh, the old man is very happy. He's beaming with joy and saying that you know I, I asked and immediately I get a prasadam. That is not the thing. The boy was in utter shock. The student he's telling the warden, sir, he takes the sweet from my hand, and he disappeared in front of my eyes, sir. He says, in Kulwant Hall, in between the pillar and this student, that man disappeared in front of his eyes. He says, sir, I was stunned. I, was, I just wanted, I didn't know whom else to tell. I knew you were the only one who can understand. So I came back to tell you. You know, this is, as Amaya was saying, no, Swami has not got in, gone anywhere. Wherever we pine for him, wherever we you know, pray to him, he is going to present himself there. You know, not only has Swami in this incident told the, you know, the student, the young student, that I am very much here. 
He has also answered the warden's prayers, you know. Warden was pining and saying, where is the birthday boy? And he said, Swami says, the birthday boy has not gone anywhere. The birthday boy is still here. <laughs> now, this is another wonderful lesson that, uh, you know, wonderful incident that warden had told. Now, I'll probably, we'll just wrap it up with just one more incident which comes to my mind. There's a beautiful incident that happened uh, in 2013, in fact. Uh, there was this one lady who had come from Kerala, a very poor, from a very poor family, and uh, she was, she had come to Prashantilam to actually do seva. Uh, and this was against her family's wishes, in fact, uh, because her husband was not keeping well. But she, in fact, b for that very reason, she wanted to come to Prashantilam to kind of seek Swami's intervention, you know, in, in, into her husband's, uh, you know, for her husband's good health. And she was working in the South Indian canteen. She's making laddus and, uh, you know, rolling chapatis, etc. And extremely poor. The only piece of gold that is there on her body is her Mangal Sutra. And one day after she finishes, she cleans up everything and she goes back to her, uh, to, the, to the quarters where the seva will stay. And to her utter horror, that Mangal Sutra is missing. You can imagine in Prashant Indalayam, okay, with all that crowd doing seva and the only piece of gold and that too Mangalyam, you know, how important it would have been. And she was absolutely devastated, crestfallen. I mean, several things hit her because how do I go back home? And what a, you know, kind of a bad omen, Apshakun, to happen that, oh my God, I've lost my, my Mangalyam. And so she started crying and, you know, she went to several people. Obviously, they searched the whole place upside down, not to be found. And she simply went to Kulvant Hall the next day morning and she said, Swami, I am not going from Prashant Indalayam till you do something. Okay, I cannot go back. What do I face my, my relatives? What do I tell them? And uh, obviously nothing happened. <laughs> um, a week passed, her 10 days passed, her seva is over and everybody else left and she said, Swami, I am not leaving. And she continued to stay and the, the head, you know, the head of the group of sevadals, she was telling her, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. We will try to help you out. You know, you don't worry, but you need to go back. You know, your relatives are going to, are be, will be waiting for you. You're, you're off for 15 days. She says, no, I am going to wait till my Swami gives me. 15 days pass. She's sitting in the bhajan hall. The bhajan is over. She's standing in that line to move towards, you know, where the cosmic form of our beloved Lord is, the Samadhi, the Sannidhi. And as she's walking towards, a little girl, okay, walks up to her and says, Amma, you didn't get laddu, no? Take this laddu. Puts the laddu in her hand, she opens that packet, and in that laddu is her Mangal Sutra. This is, we have seen that lady, and we have documented this story also. And she just looks at that, and now just imagine what her joy is, because not only is her Mangal Sutra found, now this Mangal Sutra is blessed because it has been given back by Bhagwan. If any one of us would have found it, yeah, it was a lost and found case. Here it was a gift by Bhagwan. And needless to say, when she went back home, her husband is absolutely hale and hearty. What will you say about that? Right? That is our Bhagwan. That is our Swami. The only thing that we need to do is to call out to him within. How many ever, no, there will be lots and lots of distractions around us There'll be lots and lots of people that we would like to hold on to thinking that maybe this person, you know, will convey something to me, that thing will do, this vibhuti. No, the only source is to chalo man jaye ghar apne, because that is our only true source. Let us hold on to that. And once we chant out, chant his name, he is, all we need to do is to call out to him, right? So with that, with that, those feelings in our mind, we thank you all for your patient listening and we we'll just end with this beautiful song and we also take this opportunity to thank Bhagwan that on, on such an, I would say, you know, and also grateful to you all, all of us are so grateful to you all that on a Sunday when I'm sure each one of you would have liked to probably, you know, spend the whole day home taking some rest, you all have come all the way from your, from your respective places. Yes, madam, we'll just finish this and then we will we will see what what they have in store for us sure all that we've been doing actually is bhajans <laughs> we've been singing the name of the lord we've been chanting his glory 
we'll just end with this yes, and we'll then we will with this one, one song, song which conveys which, yeah. which actually conveys like amaya was saying that if we take the name of the lord we have his protective hand over our head so let us pray to the lord you can sing along with us actually this this song also जिसके सर पर हाथ हो तेरा कौन बिगाड़े उसकी हर पल उसके साथ है बाबा हर पल रक्षा उसकी ओम साई जय साई श्री साई जय साई ओम साई जय साई श्री साई जय साई साई राम साई राम साई राम साई राम साई नाम सुमिरन करे यही नाम सब दुख दूर करे साई नाम सुमिरन जो भी करे यही नाम सब दुख दूर करे भव सागर से पार उतारे जन्म जन्म के पाप हरे यही नाम सब दुख दूर करे साई राम साई राम साई राम साई राम कोई मनोरथ मन में बसाए तुम्हारी शरण जो आए इन चरणों में मन चाहा फल बिन मांगे मिल जाए साई बिगड़ी बात सवारे साई बिगड़ी बात सवारे साई बिगड़ी बात सवारे सुख संपत्ति भंडार भरे यही नाम सब दुख दूर करे साई राम साई राम साई राम परती तीरथ धाम हमारा हम साई के पुजारी साई बाबा इस धरती पर शिव शक्ति अवतारी जब हो सर पे साया तुम्हारा जब हो सर पे साया तुम्हारा जब हो सर पे साया तुम्हारा कौन किसी विपदा से डरे यही नाम सब दुख दूर करे साई राम साई राम साई राम साई राम साई गंगा साई जमुना साई मथुरा काशी साई तो है घट घट वासी अजर अमर अविनाशी साई नाम ब्रह्मा साई नाम विष्णु साई नाम शिव शंकर ओम साई जय साई श्री साई जय साई ओम साई जय साई श्री साई जय साई ओम साई जय साई श्री साई जय साई ओम साई जय साई साई राम 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 साई राम
शांति 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 जय बोलो भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा जी की जय